and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So what you're seeing on screen right now is Navtex being received using an SDR and an application called FL Digi decoding it to ASCII, something that we can read. Now, what is Navtex, I hear you ask? Well, it's a navigational telex and it's an international automated medium frequency direct printing server for delivery of navigational and meteorological warnings and forecasts as well as urgent maritime safety information. Now, international Navtech messages can be received on 518 kilohertz, and national Navtech messages can be received on 490 kilohertz. Now, there's no fees to receive this information, and of course, when this service was introduced, you had to purchase specific hardware for receive, decoding, print, either on paper or print on screen those decoded messages. Yep, some of those hardware receivers had physical printers and could cost up to $1,500 to buy. Now, fast forward to the more modern day technology, you can purchase dedicated receivers that show these messages on an LCD for less than $200. Of course, you can go down the route of purchasing an STR receiver, a computer, and then install and set up software like I showed you at the start of this video. But recently, I come across a YouTube channel, Boatcom, which only had one video at the time of making this video. And the gentleman was demonstrating a new software package that he designed, which automates receiving Navtech messages and then showing them on a screen via a web browser, meaning any device connected to the same network can view these Navtech messages. Now the whole system uses a Raspberry Pi and an SDR from SDR Play. Now currently only SDR Play receivers are supported, and I believe that's because the developer did not have any other SDRs to test with, but SDR Play's receivers are of top quality, and that's something you need when receiving critical information like Navtech messages. Now, this application will also monitor both the international 518 kHz channel as well as the 490 kHz channel at the same time, meaning you'll not miss any of those messages from either of those channels. Now this is all possible because we're using an SDR. Of course, anyone anywhere can use this software application on a Pi with an SDR Play receiver. But what this is intended to be run with is a special Pi operating system called Open Plotter. Now Open Plotter is a DIY toolkit to be used as a navigational aid in small and medium length boats. And it can be installed all on a Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not a boater myself, well, not yet, but if you are, then you know how expensive all of that navigational equipment can be. If you're a tinkerer or someone that loves electronics, computers, and boats, then Open Plotter is for you. It offers a whole load of built in interfaces to chart plotter, weather apps, Signal K, AIS, Autopilot, and the list goes on. Definitely worth checking the website for more information if that's your thing. So this Navtech application can be installed on OpenPlotter and configured to start on any Pi startup or reboot, meaning it should always be on and accessible. The hardware that I'll use here will be a Pi 4 and connecting the Pi to an SDR Play receiver is as simple as using one USB cable. Now here I'm using the RSPDX from SDR Play. Of course, you will need an antenna and for this test, I'll be using my outside wire antenna. Now, for those of you that will use this on a boat, I'll suggest either making or purchasing an antenna designed to be used with those Navtex frequencies. We also need the OpenPlotter Pi OS image. Now, this can be downloaded free of charge from the OpenPlotter website. Now, I'd like to quickly thank today's video sponsor, and that's JLC PCB. Now, if you do not know who JLC PCB is, well, they're a one stop shop for everything related to PCB manufacturing at a fraction of the cost compared to others. They're affordable and provide a fast and high quality service. JLC PCB can manufacture one to eight layer PCBs and with a fast lead time of up to just 24 hours, their strict quality control is trusted by over 5.4 million customers around the world. Now JLC PCB has an in-house production guaranteeing consistent quality for prototypes and large orders. The ordering process is super easy with instant quotes and a very user-friendly platform, which includes real-time tracking of your order. 
So if you want to DIY your PCBs, JLC PCB is the best choice. Even multi-layer PCBs are incredibly affordable. Six layer PCBs start at only $35. Now you can also get a $30 coupon for six layer PCBs on their website. That means you can experience high quality multi-layer PCBs for just $5. You then need to write that OS image to a micro SD card. And for this, I'm just going to use the official Raspberry Pi Imager software. You will need to select the model of Pi that you're using and then select custom image. And a pop up will allow you to select that newly downloaded open plotter image file. Now select the SD card and then edit the customization settings. Here you can configure a host name, a username and password and enter a Wi Fi router connection details. Now, if no Wi Fi connection details are entered in this customization page, then once OpenPlotter OS has booted, you'll find an ad hoc wireless network that you can connect to from any device. So just let the image write, and then once complete and verified, pop the SD card into your Pi and just power it up. If you don't have a monitor and keyboard plugged into the Pi, then you will need to SSH into it across the network. You can use something like Putty for this, as we're going to need to install some software using the command line. Now these are the software installation procedure instructions. You can pause the video if you want to, or just follow along. Now for the next part, you'll need an internet connection on the Pi, as the first thing to do is download the SDR Play API for Linux. You can download this from the SDR Play website. Now once downloaded, we'll just need to enter a couple of commands to run that install script. Now, once the SDR Play API has been installed, which is the bit of software which communicates with the physical SDR device, then we need to go on to running the Navtex application installation commands. Now, there's not many commands, but I'll go through each one by one. Now, there are some prerequisites that need to be installed first. You can install them individually or just use a command like this to install them in just one command, like shown here. Next, we need to download the actual Navtex decoder software using the wget command like this, and then uncompress that file using the tar command. Now finish off the install by entering the last couple of commands into the terminal window and let it do its thing. Now normally I always reboot after installing new software, it just means we have a fresh boot. Once installed and rebooted, we can now run the Navtex receiver application using this command, and then we need to run the web server using this command. At this point, and assuming you have an antenna connected, you can visit the web server using any browser on any machine that is on the same network, and it should look like this. It's just the IP address of the Pi with port 8080. Now on the configuration tab of the web browser application, you will find a section where you can turn on and off certain message types. You will need to look online to see which message types you need, but the standard selected ones should provide results. Now one last file to edit so that the Navtex receiver and web application start when the Pi starts up is to edit the rc.local file. Add these two lines towards the end of the file just before the exit zero command and then just save the file. Now when the Pi starts up, the receiver and web server will automatically start. Now after a while, you will start to see messages appearing on the messages tab like this. Just click on the message you want to view to see its contents. Now just click on the message again to go back to the message list. Now just remember that this is pretty much the first release of this software and I already can think of some nice changes that could be made. Now I think the messages automatically delete after around 16 hours, I may be wrong there, but there is a time limit and I think it would be nice to be able to change this time limit in the configuration page. I'd also like to see a theme editor so you can have a light or dark theme for this web page. Now I mentioned earlier that I installed this on OpenPlotter OS for the Pi, but you can also install it on any Pi OS, I believe. It's just that OpenPlotter is a great DIY tool for those boaters that love to tinker. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments below, and I'll leave a link to the original video posted by Boatcom. So go give it a like and show the guy some love for all his hard work that he's done. Until the next video, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.